and it's time for some more Chinese knockoffs here on the Retrocore channel. But today we've got a pretty nice looking package. So what could be inside? Well, apparently this is meant to be a Nintendo Switch beater. <laughs> oh yeah, as if. But it still looks pretty interesting. So let's open up this pretty nice looking box. And what do we have inside? Well, as you can see, we have a tablet. And I have to say that it is packed rather well. But before we get a look at the tablet, let's see what else is in the box. So underneath the cardboard cutout, we have the power pack as to be expected. And this is actually a five volt, two amp output. Okay. We also got a bit of foam. We have micro USB, that's for transferring data to the machine. We have a USB to micro SD adapter, which we can use to transfer files onto a micro SD card and then put the micro SD card into the machine. We've got another socket here. This is a USB to barrel plug adapter. This can also be used for charging it. If you want to charge over USB, we have a European plug adapter thing. And finally, we have the instruction manual, which is in English or English. And the first thing it says is it's got a 7.0 inch screen, high definition screen. Well, I don't know about high definition. All right. Well, there's not much to say about those instructions. If you want to read them, pause the video here and you can have a good look at reading those instructions. Okay, well, let's take a look at the actual device. Let's move everything to the side. Lots of goodies in the box. And bring over the device. And here it is. Okay, so here we have it. This is the GameS. Well, I guess that's how you pronounce it. I'm not too sure. So on the face of the device, we have a digital D-pad here and a digital thumbstick, it's not analog. We've got the face buttons and a couple of menu buttons here and a camera on the back of the machine. It's covered in the cellophane, so we'll just take that off. Oh yeah, soft that comes. And we can see that there are actually two stereo speakers and they do work in stereo and another camera. Along the top, we have the power input to charge it. We've got the uh, micro USB socket there to transfer data to it. We've also got a reset switch and a power switch and two very nasty and fiddly LR trigger buttons. On the bottom, we have a headphone jack. Very useful indeed. So what is this device? Well, as you probably guessed, it's Android based and it does take forever to boot up. So let me just, uh, Press the power button here and try and make it boot. So it turns out that this was actually powered up. It just took a while to boot. So switching it back on, we can see that it is actually just an Android device. And when we unlock the machine, we can see all the menus. Now, when you first get this machine, you do actually go straight to this screen, which is the game manager. And you know, it's not very attractive, is it? It's got a couple of emulators here. We don't know what emulators they are, unless you can guess what the extension is. And, um, you know, these are the built-in emulators that come with it. Obviously, that one plays NES games. This one plays Super Nintendo games. But, you know, it's a bit, well, you know, not very attractive, is it? So, what I do is uh, basically I just go and run the standard Android, uh, you know, home screen and put all my emulators on there. Now, as an Android device, this runs a uh, 4.1 and to be honest, it is very, very slow. It lags like hell. Uh, yeah, as you can see, <laughs> that is meant to have gone to the other, um, uh, you know, background menu screen where all the apps are stored. And for some reason it has locked on the transition phase, it's meant to zoom back. Oh, there we go, okay. Yeah, this is awful. It's a terrible device. 
it lags so badly. Now, surprisingly, once you get the emulators up and running, the lag seems to go away. So um, let's just start up an emulator. Uh, for example, let's go with Mega Drive. This is md.emu. Now, one thing I must point out is the screen on this thing is awful. Now, you can see it fairly well on camera here, but watch what happens when I tilt it. Right, you can hardly see it now. Yeah, it doesn't have a very good viewing area. And the reason for it juddering there is because it was changing uh, screen orientation. Now, one thing which I don't like about this machine, there are no actual um, physical buttons, you know, for the volume and so on. So you have to press the uh, menu system down here to get to the volume. We can also map the controls to the buttons using software, but um, it's best to do it through the emulator. So there you go, it's running Mega Drive, Thunder Force 4 there, perfectly well. Let's check out Virtual Racing, will this run? Continue, okay. And yes it does. Although the sound is kind of choppy. Yeah, not so good. Okay, let's try out a mass system game. So you want to get out of the Mega Drive menu and into the mass system menu. And we'll try a bit of uh, Wonder Boy 3. Continue, okay. Oops, should have went up there. As you can see, this is running really, really well. No problems at all. Okay, we can play PC Engine games. Let's start up with uh, a bit of Magical Chase. Continue, why not? Oh, it's paused. Uh, start. I'm going to use this digital pad thing. And as you can see, that's working fairly well. Okay, so how about the big one, PlayStation. Will it run PlayStation games? Um, kind of. <laughs> Let's see how it handles uh, some PlayStation gaming. Jumping Flash 2, big trouble in little move. Okay, and as you can see, it's kind of jerky. But, uh, let's try and start the game, see if it works. And it seems to have frozen on the screen. Great. Push that button, okay. I wonder how this is gonna work. <laughs> Probably not too well. Well, it's actually loaded. Oh, and it runs at about one frame a second. Ah, totally unplayable. Oh, it's frozen. Yeah, so as you can see, PlayStation is not an option, really. It's unplayable. Ah, oh, license check failed. <laughs> Classic. Now, I know some of you are saying uh, at home watching this, why don't you try a different emulator? 
Oh, sorry, why don't you try a different game? Uh, well, the thing is, I did try a few different games, and to be honest, they all run like crap. Even very basic games run like crap. Okay, so um, how about N64? Can this run N64? Well, surprisingly, it does. But um, like on the previous Android-based system I tried, this uh, oh, plays certain games better than, you know, other games. So uh, let's see. I think I've got Castlevania already loaded into this. Oh, we haven't got GoldenEye loaded into it now. GoldenEye runs like a dog. Watch this. It seems to be running okay there on the Rare logo. But it's, it will soon mess up. There you go, you can see it's stuttering like hell. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and if you actually try and play it, it's even worse. Right, let's try and play the game. So N64 GoldenEye is not going to be playable. It's just too slow. Where's my gun gone? There we go. Shoot the bastard. I use the trigger buttons to shoot. I can't even get him to shoot. Anyway, let's press escape. And get out of this. And let's try a different Nintendo 64 game just to show you that not all the N64 games run like crap. Now while the sound is kind of choppy, you can see that the game does run a lot smoother than GoldenEye did. And here we go, we're now playing. Actually, to be honest, that, the sound would just drive you nuts. While it might be smooth enough to play, the sound would drive you crazy. Okay, let's get out of that. Okay, so maybe we're being a bit unrealistic expecting this thing to play PlayStation and, you know, Nintendo 64 games. Yeah, we're not being very fair to it. So how about playing something uh, on the lower end of the arcade spectrum? Okay, press and select, put your coins in and let's press start. Yeah, actually, it's not even playing this properly. It's kind of uh, skipping around on the audio. Oh, my. And for those wondering, I have uh, actually customized all the options on these emulators to uh, make them run as good as possible. Okay, maybe this game's a little bit ambitious to be running perfectly. Let's try a lower-end arcade game. 
press escape. And uh, nope. Actually, we've got to press menu, sorry. Uh, let's see. Hellfire, that's a little bit older, isn't it? That should be less demanding. Let's give that a shot. Uh, start. Okay, press select to put in the credits. Press start. Now we can tell straight away the sounds juddery on this as well. Can't see my ship. Where is it? Where's my ship? Great, no ship. All right, well that game doesn't work, does it? <laughs> Jesus. All right, uh, let's try um, a different emulator. Okay, let's go and take a look at some of the built-in emulators on this thing. So um, what we do is we press Game Manager and we'll go to the built-in emulators and let's try a little bit of a Game Boy Advance. Okay, see how that works. Maybe a little demanding this game, so it'll be interesting to see how it handles it. And it handles it fairly well, that's very smooth. Okay, so if nothing, at least we know this thing plays Game Boy Advance games very well, or at least this title. Well, and it played PC Engine flawlessly as well. Okay, let's try another game. Yeah, I think it's safe to say the Game Boy Advance games run fairly well on this thing. So if anything, at least it's going to be a nice big Game Boy Advance. And this uh, digital thumbstick is very nice to use, actually. Okay, actually, I think I'm getting a bit too uh, much into that, so um, let's exit that. Hopefully, uh, Super Nintendo emulation will also be good. It's looking promising so far. Yep, that's running pretty much as you'd expect. Now it's a shame that the default setting is set to 16 by 9 widescreen. That is kind of annoying. Okay, let's try another game just to make sure that uh, we can get a good uh, look. Ah, I know. Let's try a Super FX game. Will that run? Probably not. Nope, it doesn't look like Super FX games want to run. Okay, well that's uh, not surprising really. Okay, let's try Super Lester. Yeah, that runs. Now I would like to change the uh, aspect ratio on this. Let's see if we can do that. So we go to settings. Got the key settings, virtual key, screenshot, and resume. No, you can't. So this emulator does not allow you to change the screen settings. That's kind of annoying. Let's just see how it runs the game. Yep, nice and smooth. Oh, I missed my laser.
Let's try it out a Super Nintendo emulator, which I did actually download. This is SNES 9X. Now, thankfully, this emulator allows you to change the screen aspect ratio. Looks much nicer. Doesn't seem to be as smooth though. It seems to be a little bit choppy. Oh, it is very choppy. Oh yeah, this emulator is not as good as the one built into it. Okay, well, I wonder if this emulator will run Super FX games. Let's give Wild Tracks a try. Yes, at least it boots Super FX games. How well does it run? Let's check it out. Yeah, not very well actually. Oh, actually, no. Well, mm. yeah, I mean, I think it runs uh, Sega SVP chip games better. This seems a lot slower than the real game runs. Yeah, and the sound keeps going off. Okay, um, okay so yeah, there's the emulation on that piece of crap. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's, what the hell's going on? Let's get rid of all that. And before we finish up, let's take a look at one more emulation. The Dreamcast. Yeah, this is not going to work, is it? <laughs> but, um, I just want to show you how bad it runs. It does actually run the games, believe it or not. Uh, very poorly, but it will run the game. Check this out. And there you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> While it did load up the game, it is completely unplayable. And there's something gone wrong with the textures there, it's all weird. So, so far the emulation side of things has been hit and miss. Uh, the only ones that seem to work perfectly are PC Engine, and it will run PC Engine CD games perfectly as well. Uh, Game Boy Advance, uh, Super Nintendo, but the screen resolution is uh, stuck in widescreen. Uh, Mega Drive seems to run fairly well as well. But how about actual Android games? Well, it doesn't even run those things properly. Now, this game I'm loading up now runs perfectly fine on my Asus uh, Zenfone 3, which is not really a premium phone. Um, but on this thing, it runs like a dog. As you can see, it's taken forever to boot up right now. Yep, it's not gonna boot, it's taken forever. Come on. Okay, it finally booted up. Bloody hell, that took forever. Now, this being an Android game, it is touch screen. You can map the controls to the actual physical buttons. But as you can see, it is so slow, I'm not even going to bother with it. Just to show you how bad that is. Let me grab my phone. Okay. Oops. And watch how it should be running this game. Okay, you ready? This is how the game should be running. And don't forget, this is not a premium phone. And let's take a look at it on this device. Yeah. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, bloody awful. Okay, so how about other features? Okay, since this is an Android device, we expect it to do other things apart from play, play games. Um, well, 
I can tell you now that it will run HD video and it seems to run 720p video just fine. Um, the camera on it is absolutely awful. Um, in fact, tell you what, why don't I give you a quick sample of the video footage taken from this camera? Well, as it turns out, it cannot actually take videos. That's how good this thing is. So, here's two pictures. This picture is taken with the back camera, two megapixel, and this picture is taken with the front camera, one megapixel. Yeah, bloody awful. Okay, so that's all I can show you, really. That is the Game SE or Gamus Android tablet from China. Now, this thing, in all honesty, is complete and utter shit. It is really bad. But then you've got to think to yourself, it only cost $52 shipped. That's how much this cost. The screen is wide on it. It has physical controls. It plays Game Boy Advance pretty much perfectly. It plays PC Engine very well. Super Nintendo, although it's stuck in widescreen. And Mega Drive fairly well as well. So, I mean... If that's all you want to play, some Game Boy Advance games, some regular Game Boy, some NES games, Master System, you know, the really uh, lower end of the uh, emulation spectrum, uh, you know, 16-bit or before, then this is going to be ideal for you. But if you want to be playing some emulation like uh, PlayStation, Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, and, you know, the higher end stuff, this is not going to cut it. So, I mean, it's built reasonably well. It's a bit squeaky. Can you hear that? Yeah, I mean, it could be built better, but as I said, it was 50 odd dollars shipped, so... Mm, I don't know. Maybe it's okay. Um, personally, I'm not too happy with the device, but, uh, you know, your opinion may vary. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this Chinese knockoffs review, and I'll see you in the next video.